Jenny going so low, 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 low with Rosie being the only member left in Blackpink. What are these rumors coming out of YG Entertainment? But who signed off on Kingdom's album art? And did we really clown ourselves thinking that Baby Monster would debut in this lifetime? At this rate, they're literally gonna be <laughs> senior monster. <laughs> that was lame, I know. JYP's new girl group, Kepler and Stray Kids updates, and so much more in today's episode of Totally Legit K-Pop News with me, Angelina. So if you're interested, please keep on watching. Also, feel free to skip through to whatever subject interests you the most. And don't forget to like, comment, and share this video with the friends you don't have. You can also follow me on all of my social media linked below. Star. Of course, we have to start off with all of the Blackpink related news. Most recently, the fact that everyone is convinced that Jenny is going to release a solo album like tomorrow. Maybe not tomorrow, but I was really curious as to why everyone was talking about Jenny solo, seemingly saying that she confirmed that it is coming. All over TikTok, all over Twitter. I literally even saw the hashtag JNK1 trending. So why do people think this is a thing? Especially since we've had zero confirmed news of any of the members signing back with YG. Oh well, Jenny didn't interview with Harper's Bazaar. And when asked what kind of concept she would like to do for her next album, she responded, I'm making things that are unique to Jenny and the most Jenny-like. Please look forward to it. Oh, now is this in any way a confirmation of absolutely anything? I would think not, but I love the Delu energy that we're all exuding and I would love to join in. This did remind me of a TikTok that I saw earlier about how, you know, Lisa posted a picture of her at the studio and everyone thought that we were getting new Blackpink music. And at the end of it all, we saw that she actually just went to the studio to play Animal Crossing with Somi. And I'm not trying to be a hater, but I just think that things aren't always as they seem. But hell, sure, Jenny Solo is totally coming. I totally believe this. Just like I believed Baby Monster was going to debut this month. No, but I was really trying to be positive for that one. I was like, we're literally gonna get a teaser tomorrow. And that was three weeks ago. <laughs> But on that note, let's take a little bit of a minute to talk about Baby Monster because it seems that their debut has actually been delayed. With Pop Base tweeting, YG Entertainment is reportedly delaying Baby Monster's debut indefinitely to improve the quality. Indefinitely? What does indefinite, I know what indefinitely means, but why are they using that word indefinitely? Indefinitely, for an unlimited or unspecified period of time. How do you not know? How do you not specify that? I'm so confused. <laughs> that was such bad acting. Now, I don't know where this was announced, so do take that with a grain of salt, but it is nearing the end of September, and we have been seeing squat. I'm a blink and a blackjack. I've been burned before. But a lot of people are wondering if this has anything to do with Blackpink's De own delayment in signing their contracts because of course a lot of people said that their contracts ended in august and now we're nearing the end of september so what is going on is yg waiting to debut baby monster until the news of blackpink's contracts is out here's another article can baby monsters debut save yg entertainment amid uncertainty surrounding blackpink's future so maybe it really does have to do with blackpink maybe yg really timed it in a way where they thought hey Blackpink surely are going to re-sign with us, everything's gonna go smoothly, and then we can debut Baby Monster, and our stocks are gonna be amazing, nothing is gonna go wrong. As negotiations between Blackpink members and YG over the contracts remain uncertain, shareholders' concerns are deepening. Amidst this, YG Entertainment is focusing on the debut timing of Baby Monster, which the label is preparing with great care. Baby Monster will be the next girl group launched by YG, the first in about seven years since Blackpink debuted. So the article goes on to say, for YG, is my face transparent? The face filter isn't even on high, but the sun just came out. I was just curious. doesn't matter. For YG to achieve sustainable growth, the renewal of Blackpink's contract is essential. But the success of Baby Monster, the next generation, is critical according to industry consensus. YG has already demonstrated its capability in discovering and producing talented K-pop idols that achieved global success with Big Bang 21 and Blackpink. It remains to be seen if Baby Monster, who has been receiving high expectations from music fans even before their debut, will become the future global K-pop star responsible for YG's future. Now, this is concerning to me. I'm not concerned, actually. I don't really care. But here's the thing. If your entire success is contingent on the success of one group that you decide to debut every seven years, it's a horrible business model. So YG literally shot themselves in the foot by doing this because every other company in the big four have a bunch of successful groups. So I'm not gonna sit here and cry that YG put all their eggs in Blackpink's basket. 
Moving on to some more Blackpink news, however, there is a rumor that Rosé is the only Blackpink member who signed back with YG. According to some insiders, while also saying that the other members are looking into different companies while still wanting to be a part of Blackpink. Now, it is so important to note that none of this is confirmed. In fact, YG released another statement in regards to this. They must be so tired of releasing statements, constantly having to comment on all of these contract renewal rumors, but essentially, they just simply said, currently, Blackpink's contract renewal has not been confirmed and is being discussed. Now, I feel like the reason they are so quick to address these contract renewal rumors is because every time one of these rumors comes out, their stock prices go down. Blackpink's contract renewal failure rumor shakes YG Entertainment's stock price. This also happened when the rumor of Lisa leaving happened. As rumors swirl around the potential disbandment of the super girl group Blackpink, YG Entertainment has felt the impact with its stock price dropping by more than 10%. Now, I have no idea about the stock market if this is normal but here's what some k netizens think about the rumors of all three members leaving except for rose i think it will be hard for them to get together i mean it's not like yg was releasing their albums either <laughs> So Rosé is the only remaining one in YG, and the other three members will all go to different labels, right? Good luck, Lisa. They may be able to promote separately, but group promotions are going to be even more difficult if they sign with different labels. Lisa, promise me you will go somewhere better. Oh, Jisoo, I wonder where she's going. They didn't promote together much, even when they were in YG. I wonder if they will promote together if they are different labels. I think Lisa is going to be an international celebrity. If they agreed to promote six months out of the year, then the group is still together. I thought all the other members beside Lisa would renew their contract, but I guess not. That's right, I knew the news would come out once someone signs. So the comment about promoting six months out of the year. This comes from the insider information who seems to have very specific details about the alleged contract. They're basically saying for Jenny, Jisoo, and Lisa that if they go to different companies, YG has it stipulated in this fantasy contract, which we don't quite know if it exists yet or not, that they would have to promote under YG as Blackpink for six months out of the year. Now that sounds fishy to me because if you want to go to a different company but half of your year you have to dedicate to your previous company then what's the point? That sounds like a fishy contract to me. That sounds like a, like it sounds weird to me. You might as well just be part of the company if half your year you have to dedicate to that company anyways. You're not really free from that company. And just as people are saying, Blackpink don't promote that much anyways. Let's not kid ourselves. They'll come back every one or two years. They would literally be even more free to just stay under YG and do their own things. Does that make sense? Rather than signing with different companies and then suddenly every six months they're having a comeback that doesn't make it what make it make sense i mean literally another article k netizens say it doesn't matter if blackpink members are in different agencies because the group comebacks are so infrequent so i'm just saying the insider information seems a little fishy fishy like however we do have some people speculating which companies each member could join and it does seem a little surface level like oh jenny should go to hive jisoo to sm jenny might sign with hive so she can get into different activities jisoo would fit with sm entertainment SM actress because she can further her career as an actress. Also, she has the SM visuals. Lisa has a lot to offer from big overseas companies, so she could definitely sign with a big foreign label. And I've heard a lot of people saying that Rosie would fit well with the black label. Even though the black label is basically YG, not my circus. But I will leave you guys with that question. Of course, let me know your thoughts and predictions about all of this, but also let me know which member you would pair with which company. So we have the group Kingdom in the news because their album art looks identical to a religious textbook. Fourth generation groups agency under fire for making their album look like the Quran, Islam's sacred text. So a lot of people are mad at GF Entertainment. So this is from their album History of Kingdom part um, so this is what the albums look like. Now compare that to the Quran. For Muslims, the Quran is a holy, sacred text, and its imitation for a K-pop group's concept is offensive. Fans have begun reaching out to GF Entertainment in hopes of informing of why the album's design should be changed. GF, you don't surprise me at all. For those who don't know, the second book is the Holy Quran, which is sacred for our religion, and it is hurtful to compare the design exactly. To see the photos of our idols when opening that book, please understand us. And then we see even more comparisons. Now we did get a response from GF Entertainment and here's what they had to say. First, I want to sincerely thank all the fans for your love and interest in Kingdom. Kingdom's seventh mini album, History of Kingdom, part 
Jahan, which was scheduled to be released today at 2 p.m., has been postponed due to internal circumstances. I'm sorry to inconvenience the fans with such sudden news regarding the change. We will let you know as soon as the schedule is confirmed. And that's all we know as of now. Next up, we have Kepler's Yesa, who is going to sit out of activities due to health issues. With Wake One and Sing Entertainment releasing the following statement, we are making an announcement regarding Kepler's Yesa health and her inability to attend a scheduled event. Due to her health suddenly taking a turn for the worse, Kepler's Yesa will unavoidably be unable to attend the 2023 K-Pop Nation X Career Music Festival in Poland. They go on to say that she's resting and Kepler will continue as eight members for that event. Our agency will take all measures necessary to help our artists recover her health. We would like to apologize to the fans who have been waiting to see Yeso for giving you cause for concern. So of course, we wish Yeso a speedy recovery. Have you guys been watching A2K, America to Korea, JYP's new show following the formation of their new American girl group made using the K-pop system? Well, the final lineup has finally been revealed alongside the name of the group. I mean, so their name is Vita and they've already released the music video for YO Universe and they've already performed on Music Bank. So let's check out the lineup. So we have Lexi, Camilla, Kendall, Savannah, KG, and Kaylee. And I'm actually going to do a music video reaction for my patrons right now. Her voice is beautiful. Is she actually a gymnast? Very unfortunately, we're going to be talking about Stray Kids. Three Stray Kids members get into minor car accident and cancel upcoming schedule. So Stray Kids, Lee No Hyunjin and Seungmin have canceled their upcoming activities after getting into a minor car accident. So JYP is saying that it was a minor collision, that no one was seriously injured, but they did sustain mild muscle pain and bruises. So the statement is as follows. While returning to their dorms after a schedule on September 20th, the vehicle carrying Stray Kids members Lee No Hyunjin and Seungmin was involved in a minor collision. So, of course, they immediately went to the hospital, with medical professionals advising them to receive conservative treatment for now. Therefore, we inform you that the following schedules have been cancelled or modified. So, for Lino and Hyunjin, they won't be going to Milan Fashion Week, and Seungmin won't be hosting his birthday YouTube Live. Stray Kids were supposed to perform at the Global Citizen Festival, but now it will only be through Racha. So, I really hope everything is okay with them. Car accidents are rough. So, I hope they also take care of their minds as well. Let's move on to a little segment I like to call K-pop shenanigans, which are basically fun little things that have happened in K-pop recently. So, Nijin's head covered V's slow dancing. Nan released a band live clip of her song No Problem featuring Felix off of her debut album, which was released a year ago, making the upload a little random, but it's never too late. Better late than never. Lusumble win the lawsuit filed against them by Blockberry for the usage of their name. So basically Blockberry were arguing that Lusumble was too similar to Luna because it was basically like Luna Assemble, right? The court notably recognized the reputational value, customer appeal, and credibility attached to the names Luna following the cessation of their exclusive contracts. As a direct consequence of this ruling, Lusumble and any former Luna members who had parted ways with Blockberry Creative have more leeway in their future creative endeavors. Yay! I think that's great news. It was recently revealed in a fan sign that Jisoo of Blackpink and Espa's Karina were actually close. So because Jisoo liked her first, she ended up contacting her. One bit from Rise clears the rumor that his hair is fake. Okay, so let's move on to our little TikTok reaction section. I've basically saved some TikToks that I've seen before that I want to share with you, or we're reacting to some new ones for the first time. So feel free to tag me in TikToks that you think would be funny to react to. So screen recording, three, two, one, queen card. Okay, this first one isn't funny or anything, but listen. Hyodin has the most amazing live vocals and she dances. She's truly an all-rounder. I just wanted to share this. A girl getting bullied because she didn't stream sensitive by... <laughs> I 
I don't know what the context is of the original video. I've seen it going around of this poor girl getting hit by a bunch of eggs. And like, I'm hoping it's staged. Like, I don't feel good laughing about this girl if it's like not staged. But like, I feel like it has to be staged. Like, that's dramatic as hell, isn't it? Me outside high building trying to convince the security guard to tell me if Yoongi has gone bald yet. That was the, I think that was actually the first BTS song I ever heard. And it was, I didn't know anything about BTS. I didn't even see the music video. I just remember the song being really good. And it was my ringtone and my ex's ringtone to wake him up in the morning. Like he didn't even like K-pop. Like that's, it was a really good song. <laughs> So POV The Sun gives your album a whole new color. That's tragic. Protect your albums from the sun, guys. When I'm being Delulu and my friend doesn't feed into it. No. <laughs> 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 <gasps> I love Ning Ning so much. Crazy how when Sun dances, suddenly everyone and their mom is a professional dancer and judge of over dancing. Justice for Sun. Oh. 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 <laughs> I love that video. Shadi, what you doing? What? Huh? <laughs> If Rose sang fast forward, I'm your future lover. Oh, Oh my god. I love it. Huh? I can't do it. <gasps> Have you guys seen this Itzy fan cam? Why? Why? Is there like an audience ahead of them as well? I don't understand the point of like performing like you're back to the audience. Let's unbox TXT's new pads. No. Burn it. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Bam ba da ta 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 ta. So those are all the K-pop TikToks that I have for you today. Again, feel free to tag me in some if you would like. <laughs> I'm a little scared to like open that door, but we'll see. <laughs> Let's move on to the K-pop song of the day, which is Beep Beep by Girls' Generation. So Beep Beep was released in 2013 off their album Love and Peace and features a now deleted cute pink themed music video. It has been re-uploaded so you can watch it, but it's like not that great. Unfortunately, Girls' Generation Japanese discography does not exist to me on Spotify. It's literally the end of the world. But I digress. This is a cute song that talks about love that is calling like a phone, but your potential love interest is not picking up. With Tiffany basically saying at the beginning, Sam. <laughs> Pick up the phone, yeah? This song makes me feel so happy inside. Hello, hello, mushy, mushy, chow, chow, busy, busy. Every time I get beep, 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 beep. So please go check it out if you haven't already. If you have, then let me know what you think about it. Now I have to move on to my K-pop dream. So as you know, I write down all of my K-pop dreams and sometimes they come true. So I don't know what the fuck this one means, but <laughs> I had a dream that I was hanging out with Honey and Danielle from New Jeans. Honey said she was hungry and I made the joke that she was hangry. <laughs> so we all decided to go to their dorm, but Minhee Jin was not having it because I was too problematic. But my mother, 
to sew of Blackpink ended up going to their dorm and telling Hani and Danielle off. So that's that. So that is basically it for today's video. Thank you so much for joining me. These are the lovely individuals who help support my channel on a monthly basis. It means the world to me. Thank you so much. As for me, I'm going to get going and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. <sighs> Kink, 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 kink. It's a piece of gato, 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 gato. Oh my god, do you see? It's like, what is going on with my hair? I'm literally about to lose it. You're not welcome here, bump.